My presentation today is on planning for hydropower generation. I know we have a lot of challenges in terms of uh, uh, planning for construction of uh, small and big dams for hydropower generation due to issues of environment and the climate change mitigation. So this is one of the projects that is being uh, planned and developed by an independent uh, power producer in Malawi. And I thought I should share with you the experiences uh, that uh, the independent power producer has gone through, especially in the actual planning and the management of uh, uh, scoping of activities. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, in terms of uh, the development of this uh, project, we had to look at what the national development priorities are and why we had to uh, put it on this river. And then we looked also at our previous uh, literature, uh, which talked about the hydrological characteristics uh, of this river and the, the impacts uh, that were related, uh, potential impacts related with the development uh, of uh, uh, this power generation and the, the financial uh, implications of the project. Uh, in terms of Malawi uh, national development priorities, um, Malawi, like any other country uh, in the world, uh, is undergoing uh, a lot of uh, economic development challenges, and the government has come up with the uh, short-term uh, medium-term and long-term interventions to address issues of economic development as well as poverty alleviation. So uh, this project fits in very well in terms of uh, energy development, which is very important uh, in terms of uh, uh, infrastructure development, industrial development, and indeed uh, value addition in the mining sector. Uh, Malawi is now uh, becoming an area of focus uh, for the development of uh, rare earth minerals and the uh, uranium. Why on Boa River? Uh, what has happened is that all the power in Malawi, about 287 megawatts, are being produced from one river, and that is the Shire River, which is the only river that drains from Lake Malawi into the Zambezi River. And uh, that is a very big risk in terms of uh, uh, calamities. So we had to look at other rivers, and then that's why we went to uh, Boa River. And uh, this is also going to help us to improve security of power supply. And uh, around Boa River as well, the population there relies too much on agriculture, and the, the main cash crop that is being grown there is tobacco. And the, uh, you will agree with me that uh, the tobacco industry now is uh, becoming uh, more or less like a relic uh, because of uh, health issues. So we had to look at other areas of uh, uh, improving uh, the income of the people around the area. And the, we also had a new uh, regulation, uh, that is the Electricity Act of 2004, which encouraged the independent power producers and wanted to have private uh, public partnership uh, role also uh, promoted so that the private sector can take over the generation of power in the country. And the, the other issue is also to encourage Integrated Water Resources Management, or WEHAB, uh, which is uh, you looking at a water resource as a, uh, a source for improving of uh, energy supply, as well as a uh, portable water supply, agricultural development, and indeed promoting biodiversity in light of climate change. Um, mitigation. Uh, <clears throat> the Boa River catchment area has got uh, a very good hydrological characteristic, 
and in general Marawi has a uh, rainfall pattern uh, which annual uh, rainfall pattern is about 900 to about uh, 1200 millimeters and the, the catchment area for Bua River is very ideal for the development of hydropower uh, uh, stations and the, the catchment area for this river is about 10,000 square kilometers and the the characteristics in terms of climate, we have the temperature that exceeds 29 degrees, and the, in June it falls up to 4 degrees Celsius, and the, the dependable yield, uh, that is in terms of uh, uh, amount of water that can be collect, it collected by the river, is around on 75% dependability it comes to about 746 million cubic uh, meters per day. And the flyer design uh, for the hydropower station was uh, looked at uh, to almost 3,000 uh, cubic meters per second. And the evaporation loss of that catchment area is about 57 uh, million cubic meters. So these characteristics were looked at and the, we had to uh, incorporate them in the actual planning uh, for a hydropower station uh, in that river. Uh, the river there, unfortunately, is that during uh, the dry part of the uh, year, uh, it doesn't flow much and we had to look at the uh, uh, damming and the the amount of water that was required uh, was about uh, was to cover about uh, 32,000 square kilometers uh, of submergence, and this meant that uh, we had a few challenges in terms of uh, uh, submerging some bridges as well as some farms which were along the uh, the river. And the, we had to uh, make sure that we minimize the impact of the submergence, and we came up with the uh, two dams. The main dam is the one that you see on the uh, far left, and the other one is on the right. So the one on the left was meant to uh, keep water to supply to the uh, river on the right, so that uh, there is the uh, adequate flow of water for power generation. Uh, the challenges that we had to meet was, first of all, to meet the expectation of the people. And the, we had also to look at uh, uh, liaising with the, the local authorities, uh, the government, and the uh, civil uh, society in terms of how uh, we could develop this project and look at uh, what possible uh, mitigation impacts uh, would be uh, appropriate for this type of project. Uh, in terms of negative impacts, uh, through the uh, scoping, uh, which was the consultation process, we found out that the submergence of the, there would be submergence of two graveyards and the, the bridges, as I said, uh, about four bridges, and then there was supposed to be a resettlement of about 350 households and about uh, 1,300 hectares uh, was to be submerged. And the, the other thing that he, uh, gave us a challenge was blocking of upriver fish migration of uh, Lake Salmon, and the, we had to find a way of how to construct uh, the uh, fish ladders so that we do not disturb the actual breeding of fish uh, which comes from Lake Malawi uh, into the river to breed and then uh, you know, uh, goes back to the lake. And the, the other issue was to look at uh, minimizing the deterioration of water quality uh, because once you submerge uh, vegetation, usually the decay of the vegetation uh, tends also to generate uh, uh, gases like carbon dioxide and methane. 
So we had also to uh, make sure that that is addressed. And uh, we had also to make sure that there is an environmental flow. Uh, that is, uh, the flow of the river should not be disrupted. And then uh, we looked also at uh, the issues of the beauty of the area and where quarries and borrow pits uh, would be established. So the uh, main idea was to make sure that we get the gravel for the dams right inside the submergence area so that we do not change uh, the physical outlook of uh, uh, the area. And then there was the issue of uh, in-migration and we had also to find ways of uh, reducing the impacts of uh, uh, transmitting uh, HIV and AIDS. And then there was need for a lot of civic education and indeed uh, try to involve the local communities uh, in undertaking the project, uh, minus the actual skilled labors, which was supposed to be imported. Uh, in terms of positive impacts, uh, the project, as I said, uh, gives us a chance uh, to look at uh, the policy of integrated water resources management, which is now a government policy. And indeed, uh, the area, because of tobacco uh, estates, has been very much deforestated. So we had to find a way of uh, uh, forestating the area and uh, thereby also mitigating against climate change impact. So we looked at fruit growing. Uh, by the local communities uh, as a way of uh, um, bringing in afforestation as well as bringing industries for uh, uh, producing uh, juice, uh, fruit juice. So we looked at uh, plants like the mangoes as well as the uh, oranges, uh, citrus fruits, which are uh, very, very uh, attractive. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, the development of this industry. Uh, in terms of uh, improved delivery of health services, the area has a big challenge uh, because of uh, incidences of uh, malaria and waterborne diseases. And the, the project was also to look at uh, education because the uh, literacy, 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 literacy level is very low. Uh, we believe that the project also is going to uh, improve on literacy level in the area. And indeed, on the lower reaches of this river, there is a big reserve, uh, which is called Kota Kota Game Reserve. And uh, it is well known uh, in the world because of its biodiversity. And uh, it also hosts uh, birds all the way from Norway to come and breed in Malawi. And then uh, take the young ones back to Norway. So we had to uh, make sure that all oh, these are not disturbed. And fortunately enough, the sites for, for the dams are just outside uh, the game reserve, but the project is going to supply uh, water uh, for such the biodiversity. Uh, in terms of uh, elimination of drought and food security, the area is in a drought-stricken area. Government has a program whereby uh, it has a farm input subsidy program where it uh, gives uh, fertilizer to poor uh, households. But because of uh, uh, rainfall insufficiency, um, it has not been very easy to bring uh, food security at household level. So the project was seen also to address uh, issues of uh, irrigation farming uh, at a household level. So that also has been the positive impact of this project. Uh, all in all, the project was also going to, is going to bring about 40 megawatts uh, into the national grid. We have about 287 megawatts, which is being generated on Shire River, but now we are going to have 41 megawatts, which will be generated on this river, and it will go into the national grid. And we hope that uh, with the signing last week of uh, a memorandum of understanding between Malawi and Mozambique on interconnect, uh, interconnection, it is also going also to uh, contribute to Southern Africa power pool uh, electricity supply. So 
that has also increased the uh, potential for independent power producers to come into the country uh, to construct more uh, hydropower projects. And as I said earlier on, there is also the growth of the mining sector. We have uh, potential for niobium, cement, as well as uh, uranium. Uh, in terms of financial implication, uh, financial modeling has shown that this project to produce for the one megawatts, uh, the capital cost of the project is going to be about 198 million dollars and uh, the whole project period is four years. And uh, looking at the sale rate per unit, uh, it has been found that it's going to be t at 10 cents per kilowatt hour. And uh, now the challenge is that the utility company, which is a government utility company, is currently selling power at about uh, 6 cents uh, per kilowatt. So these are some of the issues that uh, uh, government will have to look into in terms of uh, subsidizing uh, the utility company to make sure that uh, the project is realized. And uh, in terms of uh, gross annual generation of income, uh, it has been pegged at 261 million US dollars and the payback period is about 13 years with an internal rate of return of about uh, 13%. Uh, in terms of uh, the actual uh, mobilization of resources, uh, African Development Bank has shown a willingness to fund the project as well as the Indian Exim Bank. So uh, the financial resources are almost there and uh, we hope that uh, the project will take off very soon. And the, on those pictorial focus, you see that uh, we had to mobilize the local uh, authorities like village headmen and chiefs to make sure that uh, they accept the project and uh, we address uh, their concerns. And uh, in terms of uh, uh, the river itself, you see to the right on the top uh, of uh, the slide there, uh, that's the river. It is dry during the dry season, but during the rainy season, it carries a lot of water. So that's why we had to build dams to make sure that uh, we keep uh, enough water for the dam. So the picture you see uh, below the slide to your left, uh, what is happening is that that's the main river you see on top there, that's the Boa River, and then the other river is called Chimbwazi. So we are going to uh, construct a dam there to keep the water, and then we are going to put in a tunnel that will flow into the Chimbwazi River, and then there, we, it, Chimbwazi River will generate about 25 megawatts, and then there we'll have about 16 megawatts, and that will be fed into the national grid. Um, the lower picture you see there is how the river looks like uh, during the rainy season. So that's the overview of the project uh, in terms of how we have uh, planned for it. And uh, I thank you for your attention. <laughs>